There are different looking versions of the stomp, but the principles for installation and the way they work are the same. You should have unpacked your stomp and located the installation instructions included within the crate. If you do not have a set of written instructions, you should contact the office to obtain them, as this contains important information that is not covered in this video. There are either two or three power input options to consider when positioning your stomp. There is a space within the base frame for a floor power outlet. You can run the power cable through a channel in the underside of the mats to a wall outlet. And some stomps have the option of a top power input. The stomp must be installed onto a hard flat surface. Once you have unpacked and decided on the location to install the stomp, you will need to lift the column upright and into position. Remove the four bolts that secure the rings at the top of the cone with the tool provided, placed to one side for now. Carefully lift the cone and the rings up the column, you can secure the cone temporarily with packing tape. This can be looped over the top of the stomp and under the cone. This will give you access to the base, where you will install and connect the stomp mats, and where you will plug in the power supply. The stomp must be anchored to the floor. You should contact a building surveyor or architect for advice on the correct anchors to use. There are up to 8 holes in the base frame that you can use to attach the stomp to the floor. There is a row of power connections at the top of the power supply box. Make sure all the connections are secure. There will be a black 3-pin power socket loose at the bottom of the stomp. This is where you will connect the power to your stomp from the power source. If your stomp has a top power input, you will also have a red power plug loose in the base. If you intend to use the top power input, this red plug should be plugged into the black socket like shown. If you are not using the top power input, the red power lead will not be used and can be ignored. If you are using a floor or wall outlet for power, then you will plug the power lead supplied with the stomp into the socket as shown. The stomp mats are modular. Each mat has a channel that can be used to run the power cable under the mat. To allow the power cable to exit the mat, a small section of the mat needs to be carefully cut away. Once this has been done, you should be able to route the cable under the mat and out to the wall socket. To install the stomp mats, carefully lift them into place keeping the wires from the pressure switches on top of the mat. The mats should locate on two raised pins that are located on the stomp base ring. Install the mats following the color labels on the base frame. All the mats should locate on pins and interlock with each other. Each mat has two twin wires coming out to connect to the stomp. The ends of the wires should be bared back approximately half an inch. This will ensure a good connection between the wires and the sprung cable connector. On each pair of wires, one wire will connect to the red terminal block and the other will connect to the black. It does not matter which cable of the pair goes to which color. As long as you keep the cables in pairs and next to each other in the block connector, as shown in the image. Once all the mats are connected, you should tidy up the wires to keep them within the area of the stomp base frame. The base ring supplied with the stomp should be installed around the base frame as shown. The two parts interlock with each other, the rebate should be facing upwards. Now the cone and rings can be lowered down to the mats. Make sure that you locate the cone and base ring with each other. You can reinstall the four bolts that attach the top cone rings to the stomp frame again. The top cone rings have a groove on the underside. The top of the cone should locate within this groove before tightening the bolts. Do not over tighten the bolts, otherwise you may distort the rings or cone. Make sure that the power from whatever outlet you are using is connected and switched on. Now you are ready to test the stomp.
At the top of the stomp, and the side of the top cover, there is a recess with a power switch. Switch the stomp on. When the stomp is switched on, it should go straight into the idle lighting effect as shown. The stomp mats have two active switch areas as shown. The perimeter and a section down the center of the mat is not active. If you tread on these areas, nothing will happen. Step onto any of the stomp mats to initiate the game. There will be a countdown of three blocks. After the countdown you can start to tread on the left and right sensor areas of the mat. Once you know the mat is functioning, Move around to the next mat, until you have tested all the mats. To adjust the volume of the stomp, there is a rotary control at the top. The installation should now be complete. If you are experiencing any problems with the stomp, please see the troubleshooting guide and video.